Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Just Be Handy. Today I'm going to end up changing the sway bar. As you can see on this 2017 Outback, it is a very small sway bar. It's probably 16 millimeters. I'll check it. Uh, but I want to do something a little bit more stout and also made by Subaru. So what I'm going to end up doing is putting in this uh, Subaru. Uh, sway bar and you can see it's uh, original Subaru with the proper bushings these uh, dots go to, towards the inside and then I'm going to use the Moog um, sway bar links I've already uh, greased these I've also uh, taken off the oil and um, hit them with the brake caliper paint so they don't rust on me uh, use some PB blaster and uh, just try to take the uh, old stuff off and put on the new. I did measure the front sway bar. It is 21 millimeters. That's why I'm going with this uh, sway bar which is also 21 millimeters. And I'll put all the links below as to where in the description below as to where you can get all this stuff. It's very reasonable. It was about $82 and it's probably going to take me 15 minutes uh, maybe 20 because I'm videoing this for you guys but um, this should make a big uh, difference of handling in the car and I'll explain uh, as to what I'll do next before I start into this all right guys I wanted to talk to you about why I'm changing the sway bar first and why I'm going with a thicker sway bar so if you could think of a sway bar as a torsion bar, when this wheel goes up, if it's a very weak one like the 16 millimeter one that's on there, there's going to be more flex. But if you put a stiffer one in, once this tire uh, goes up because of a bump, it'll bring the other one up and make the car stable. The other reason I'm doing it is you can notice I have a tow hitch on here. I tow a, a 6x10 aluminum trailer. Uh, and I sometimes fill it up pretty close to the limit of the vehicle. And if you could imagine when the, that um, when the trailer hits uh, a bump or something, because they don't usually have good suspension, it starts to wag the tail of the car. And then now you've got all kinds of motion going on. Well, if the sway bar is stiff, it can actually take it better. And that's why I'm going to go with that. Uh, wider sway bar that you can see down there um, and I'll show you guys how much difference it is once I get the sway bar off of there but if you can imagine uh, not only is it uh, wagging the tail of the car but it makes it very unstable and also when you go into fast turns and you have the car leaning it's not going to bring that uh, outer tire back down and then level the car out it's just going to be leaning all the time so that's why putting a stiffer sway bar in there kind of helps keep the car level now when you go off-roading that's going to be a detriment to go with a stiffer sway bar so if you off-road you could do what is called a sway bar um, disconnect or D-link where you could take off one of the um, uh, links to the sway bar and now it's no longer being uh, used only the one side goes up and then it's not controlling the swaying of the car but I would only advise that if you're going to go for extreme off-roading and uh, you're not going to be going over like 10-15 miles an hour because it's extreme and you want the full articulation of your uh, suspension to get through that so doing a sway bar decoupling is one way to get around having that stiffer sway bar and then when you get back on the road you're fine I'll show you guys how to do that as well it's quick you only need a couple of tools and a zip tie and then you could cut the zip tie and get that link back on but again it the sway bar is your torsion bar alright I've hit everything with the PB blaster these are 12 millimeter and this is 14 millimeter and you notice it's got a point so you could hit it with a hammer to get it through for the bottom of the link 
I do not take these off when I'm just replacing the whole sway bar because they are a pain. So I'll leave them attached and just move the sway bar out. But like I was saying, if you wanted more articulation for your suspension, you could always undo this bolt, take out the link, zip tie it up here. And you can swing it out, zip tie it up here, and now you will have full range of movement for both sides because the this will be decoupled. So it's a sway bar decoupling technique. And then just you put the bolt back while you're off-roading, make sure it's torqued down to like about um, 28 foot-pounds, I think is what it is, is what the um, torque is for it. Uh, it would be nice to just make a tube that goes on the inside and that way you won't lose it and uh, then you can get the full articulation of your suspension and then when you're done you just uh, cut the zip tie put it back in put the bolt through it and then you have your full suspension to go back on uh, being roadworthy for higher speeds all right guys so uh I will let this soak in for a few more minutes and then come back and take these off. These are notorious for uh, breaking if you don't take your time with them or sometimes it's best to just hit them with an impact and hold on firm after um, soaking them. Uh, and so we'll see how that goes. It, this car is five years old so uh, and it is in the Midwest but I always get it uh, you know, washed from underneath over the winter so we'll see how it goes all right here we go 12 millimeter and I'm gonna use the impact all right that came out okay Looks like I don't need uh, this, it's already... Excellent, they came out without any issue. So we can swing this off to the side, I'll get a screwdriver. Oh, they didn't even need a screwdriver, good. So there we go. You can notice there's a G on there, that G goes up, it goes through the hole. And then I'll do the same to the other side. All right guys, so the sway bar basically dropped when I got both sides off. This side, so the muffler here is very close to where the top bolt is, so you need to do it with a hand ratchet to get the top one, but once it's out, it, everything is loose. So now we're gonna go after the bottom bolts here and then knock them out. And again, I'm gonna leave the links connected and then we have to swing around this muffler here. Just try to pull it through. And thankfully it's cold. I didn't uh, let it get too hot, so I should be able to finagle it, move it back and forth to get the old sway bar out and the new sway bar in. All right. All right, so 14 millimeter. Just hold it from the back. came out. Now we just hit it with a rubber mallet. It went flying out. And then we will need to persuade that baby out of there. So I'll get something to push it in from down here. Okay guys, we uh, got a piece of wood that will go in here and help knock it out. Let's see here. We'll just do it a little bit on an angle. moving little by little. Also I'm going to try and give it a, a bump up that way. There we go. Got that side out. And then we'll go do the other side the same way. 
All right, let's see if I can do this without destroying my camera. But now that I got them loose, I just twisted that there. Just uh, go through. And then there we go. We got the bar, the old bar out. And then I'm going to lay it next to the new one and show you what they look like. All right, guys, you can see the stout difference, 16 millimeter versus 21 millimeter to uh, more uh, rigidity uh, between the two sides and keep the car more flat. Also, the Moog links are a lot uh, more stout and they have grease fittings. And if I ever needed to remove them, they have flats on the back side so that I can get to them. Uh, so. Uh, you can see it's probably a, a little bit better overall than these little tiny ones from Subaru. Alright guys, I did uh, put the rubber bushings on with the dots to the inside. That's what I saw on some photos of the XT, uh, XTIs. And then I put the links on and I torqued them down to 25 foot-pounds. Alright guys, I've just got it. Um, in there and um, you could see you want that bar to be going up to clear the muffler and um, I'm going to put some anti-seize on these little guys that go into the cap right here so that I can take them out later if I want to and then I will put it, the links in so I didn't want to have you see me struggling upside down to try and get this in but it wasn't too bad I had to pull down a little bit on the uh, exhaust tube. There's enough play to get it through, but uh, everything went through okay. And now I got the caps hanging there, holding it. Uh, but I will fasten those to about 12 to 15. I'll give it a good feel at uh, 10, and then go to 12 and so on. Uh, I don't have a torque for those for some reason. Um, but. Anyways, you want to see that this bar kind of follows the contour here. Um, and we'll go from there. I'll uh, button up the caps and then uh, put in the sway bar and then come back to you to see what it looks like. Okay, guys, the uh, Moog bushings push out a little bit more than the bushing lower bushings on the um, sway bar links so I had to use a tie strap with a piece of wood to kind of work it down but I eventually got the bolt through so that's something to consider with these if you didn't want to reuse the OEs so uh, it's up to you uh, but I'm gonna stick with it and it took a little bit more work with the ratchet and a piece of wood to try and feed it in but it's about a millimeter or two thicker so uh, because it is a uh, Viton bushing it I put some anti-seize on the inside of the uh, arm and then it just worked in but it needed some persuasion all right guys well guys what do you think I got her in and it was fairly well, it had a little bit of issue with the uh, tie links because they're not OE. They were off by two millimeters, but otherwise everything went in fairly easily. Again, I torqued uh, these to uh, 30, uh, these to 15, and then the top tie links were 25. And that's really it, guys. Um, I'll take it for a ride and then uh, let you know what I think. Try this one here. the car is planted compared to what it used to be so definitely I would say this is uh, 
something well worth doing if you're interested in getting more of an Audi slash BMW type wagon feel. Um, yeah, I would totally recommend this. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and uh, like this video. And um, I really appreciate your sticking out with me for this long on this video. And uh, enjoy the rest of this drive. All right, guys. Please subscribe. Thank you.